Hey friends, today in this video we will understand about the baseline hardening best practices for the system administrators who are just preparing any servers for the production environment either that is Windows servers or Linux servers. So what is the baseline hardening? So baseline hardening is the basically a process or best practices where you will modify or fortify the default configurations uh, of the servers which you have just installed or prepared because the servers which has been prepared or installed that comes with the default configuration so in the baseline hardening best practices you will specify what kind of changes you will made what kind of the settings that you will modify for the servers before moving into the the production environment basically production environment is a very critical things your all companies related data are online so you have to ensure that you followed the best best practices of the baseline hardening so in this video i will show you some example we will analyze we will make um, analysis of the changes that is required for your the for your servers which is going to be uh, to be moved inside the production environment so let's start by just moving on next ppt that is uh, baseline hardening analysis so in this uh, ppt we have just created some example which is very uh, important for the baseline hardening so first is update and patch management Similarly, the second is the firewall configurations, access control, file system and permissions, service hardening, audit and monitoring. And the next is intrusion detection and prevention, encryption, network security, backup and recovery, security updates and vulnerability scanning, security policies and documentation. So these are the very basic uh, sort of example which needs to be uh, checked or modified while, uh, while just um, implementing the baseline hardening of the server. So baseline hardening is not like a one time practice. So it's like a, a practice for regular basis whenever you are just, uh, uh, just making the changes. So you have to go through these all sample of the examples. Uh, or example you can say uh, to modify or it's working properly or uh, that comes inside the baseline hardening so in the next ppt we will understand about these all uh, sort of examples what exactly these are and how this works so basically update and patch management in the update and patch management you have to understand uh, your server must be updated or also this sh should be configured for regular updates as well so you should not only update the operating system but at the same time all the softwares which are installed on the server that needs to be also passed or this should be checked on the regular basis in the firewall configurations you have to set up a firewall to filter incoming and outgoing traffic what kind of traffics are required for the server that needs to be uh, checked inside the firewall configurations if you if you haven't required any ports or any ip address so you can block and you can allow only necessary services and ports to communicate over the internal network or the external network as well in the access control you have to specify a strong password policies, multi-factor authentications and limit access to authorized users. Only the persons who are authorized for accessing the servers that needs to be checked inside the access control. You have to also remove or disable all unnecessary user accounts which are existing on the servers or you, you, you should be careful while creating any uh, account on the servers if it is not required so you should uh, you should just avoid this sort of uh, sort of uh, process for the servers as well in the file system and permissions you can restrict file and directory permissions to prevent unauthorized access 
and use the principle of least privileges which means granting only the minimum permissions required for each user or process when you are just formatting any servers you can see when you when you have just created a folder so you have to remove the rights like uh, everyone rights you should you should try to use a group basis permissions uh, on the on the folders on the files so it will be easier for you to track who who are the persons accessing the servers you can also uh, remove the permissions if you have specified the group level of permissions on the files and folders as well so this all setting must be checked inside the file and the file system and permissions for the baseline hardening next is the service hardening service hardening is something like if, like uh, disable or remove unnecessary services and demons and configure services to run with the list privileges and uh, pri list privilege necessary like suppose if you required only the services uh, for the for any services of your server so you should uh, disable all the services which is not required for the servers and enable only the services which is required for for your for your server related purpose like if you if any softwares which require the services so you can enable the service for for the related of the the softwares but you can disable rest of the services which is not required on the server so this comes inside the service hardening next is the audit and monitoring audit and monitoring is something very critical because you can implement the auditing and monitoring tools to track and log system activity suppose if someone has just made any changes on the servers so you can track it inside the audit and monitoring so you have to implement something like uh, q radar or some other monitoring tool so this will be easier for you to track the activity track the logs of the servers regularly review and analyze logs for signs of security incidents as i already told you if you just implemented any monitoring tool so you can analyze what kind of changes has been made made by anyone in your organization or if someone is just trying to access unauthorized of your server so this can be captured easily inside the audit and monitoring uh, uh, process of the baseline uh, hardening activity and the next is intrusion detection and prevention you should deploy any intrusion intrusion detection and prevention system to detect and block suspicious activity if suppose someone is just trying to make the multiple changes on the servers so you can just implement any antivirus which is having the capability of the intrusion detection and preventions including like uh, mcafee or some other xdr softwares so this nowadays they are just uh, not only detecting but they are also preventing such kind of mass activity on your servers and the foremost important is the encryptions use encryptions for data at rest and data in transit especially for sensitive information suppose if someone is just trying to to capture to access or to print any data like uh, related with like uh, the like uh, important data like uh, like pci related data and uh, like uh, date like pen card or some other sensitive information that needs to be also encrypted while moving uh, on the network like uh, like uh, the, you are just sending email you are attaching the documents so that comes that needs to be encrypted if it is required for the business uh, perspective so you should use the encryption method so no one can track or no one can access the data you should also implement secure protocol protocols like ssh and https if you are using like any website on the servers if you have just hosted any website so you should use the https so the traffic which comes from your servers to end user that that will be encrypted and that will be also uh, uh, that will be also uh, secure 
uh, that will also provide a secure communications between client and servers. So encryption is really a critical component of the baseline hardening. Next is the network security. In the network se security, you should segment the network to isolate different server functions and use virtual LANs and network access control lists to control traffic. What kind of traffic uh, are just moving from your servers to the client? So that comes inside the ACL. You can implement the ACL to control such kind of traffic uh, as well from your servers to your end user. Next is the backup and recovery. You should use, you should implement as well a backup and recovery process of your server. So in case of any disaster, you can just make it online easily. So you should also implement a disaster recovery plan. In case if any disaster comes, so how you will recover the data and how you can make it online as soon as possible. So that comes inside the backup and recovery. Next is the security updates and vulnerability scanning. Inside the security updates and vulnerability scanning, you should stay informed about the security vulnerabilities through mailing lists or websites. Regularly scan your servers for vulnerabilities and apply patches as needed. Sometimes like if you are using any Windows servers or Windows operating system, so so in case of any uh, like vulnerabilities detected, so you, you need to first check the updates, how you have updated and in case if new updates are just uh, reported or uh, released by the Microsoft or some other uh, service provider. So you need to, to just try to apply the patches as needed. So that comes inside the security updates and vulnerability scanning. Next is the security policies and the documentations. Inside the security policies and documentations, you have to just develop and maintain security policies, documentations to ensure consistency and accountability. So basically baseline hardening is not like a, a one-time process, but it should be an ongoing process as new vulnerabilities and threats emerge over the time. So you need to regularly also review uh, review the updates uh, your security measures is really a crucial to maintaining the integrity of the server so additionally consider using server hardening guide guides specific to your server's operating system or platform as they may have unique best practices and recommendations thank you for watching this video 